This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation, specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e-learning to instructor-led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Sometimes when you're looking for criteria, you don't really know what it is you need to type in. For instance, I think Smith is S-M-I-T-H, but what if someone has a strange spelling to their name and it's S-M-Y-T-H or S-M-I-T-H-E or something that is just not normal in your spelling world and you cannot find it? So one of the features that you're going to need to know to find your criteria is how to use wildcards. So this time we're going to look at how to ask questions when you don't know exactly how to spell whatever it is that you're looking for. Let's go back into our query, our employee query, where we have employee ID, last name, first name, and state. And all I'm going to do here is add some their mistakes in here. So let's say that someone typed in Smith and they spelled it S-M-Y-T-H. Okay, S-M-Y-T-H, and I want Sally, and Sally lives in New York. And I'll actually delete these when we finish with this lesson because um, these aren't real employees. They're just for the sake of this example. And then we have employee number 109, and this one is um, S-M-T-I-H. Somebody just had a little dyslexic moment, and they turned those letters around. And this one is... Karen, and Karen lives in Florida. And you'll notice that I accidentally didn't capitalize that in New York, so let me fix that right away. So now we have just some errors that we're going to go look for, and this will give us an example of how we can go find information, specific information that we're looking for when we don't really know for sure what it is. Because even though it's right here in front of us and we can quickly see these two errors that I typed in, what if you had thousands and thousands of records and you didn't know what the error would happen to be. So let's go over into design view and in the last name field we know that if I type in Smith and I run my query I'll only find Patty and Sam because S-M-I-T-H is exactly what I asked for so that's exactly what I'll get. But this time what I'd like to do is to identify Smith but all I know is that it's something that starts with an S. That's all I know. Actually let me take all this criteria off so it doesn't get confusing. So all I know is that this person's last name, oh, aren't those annoying? I'm so sorry those pop up. You can also hit your escape key to erase those off of your screen. And again, that's access trying to help me thinking that I'm looking for a function or a formula. So I've now, I've now typed the S in, and I'm looking for anyone and everyone whose last name starts with S. So the wild card that is anything and everything is your asterisk. Asterisk, some people call it, star, you know, whatever you prefer for the pronunciation there, here's where you find it on your keyboard. It's either shift and the number eight, or on an extended keyboard, it's on the number pad and it's just above the number nine. I call it an asterisk. So there's our asterisk, so we have S and then the asterisk, or star might be a better way to say it so it's easier to understand. And that's simply going to go get us anyone and everyone's last name that starts with an S. So we'll hit our run button and we indeed can quickly and easily find those people with the last name of S. Well, in our database, we only have these few entries, but again, pretend with me for just a moment. What if you had five or 10 or 20,000 entries showing up because you have a lot of people with the last name of S? Well, then let's look quickly and clearly at how you could find specific length of a name. So I'm only looking for Sally. This time, and I'll, I'll just use this as an example in a second field. See, I have two entries that start with S over here. Well, let's just go look at this. Let me go to view, and so we'll look at any, oh, wait a second. Before we go forward, look what happened to our criteria, like S. What Access does is it just double checks that you really wanted to wildcard, and it says anything like the pattern in double quotes. So yeah, that's what I need. Anything like the pattern in double quotes. Although you don't have to type that. Access will populate that criteria with that syntax. Syntax is just the way something is said. It will populate your criteria with that syntax once you have gone from Dynaset to Design View. So now let's do the same thing. I'm looking for any 
employee with the first name that starts with S, anything, and I'll get too much here. So I'll hit run, and I have Sam and Sally. And once again, two, is, it's easy to see, but pretending that you have a couple thousand showing up and you want to narrow it down. Now I, I'm looking for Sally. So I need anyone with the last name of S followed by four more characters. The asterisk wild card gives you anything and everything. The question mark wild card gives you specific length of data. So this time I need an S followed by four characters. So let me go back to design view. See there it happened again. Microsoft said, let me just be sure of what we're looking for. Now this time, one, two, three, four. I just type in four question marks because I want to specifically state the length of the text item that I'm looking for. So it's any name that starts with an S and has four characters following the S. Let's see what we get. And there we have it. We get Sally, S-A-L-L-Y, a five character name. It's, it starts with an S and then four characters after that S. So as you're using your wild cards, you can remember that an asterisk will give you anything and everything and a question mark will only contain exactly the length that you have typed in. So if you type in something in three question marks, you'll get four, your, whatever um, text entry will be four characters. If you type in an L and 17 question marks, you'll get an entry that starts with an L and has seven, six, 18, excuse me, 18 characters total. So as you're working with your criteria, use your wild cards when you need them. And if you make a mistake, don't forget, you just go back to your view and you simply make the change in here. So if you're not sure how to ask your wild card, try, test, check it out, because you really can't mess anything up by giving it a shot.